Hey, Sooner Football fans, this is your Sooner Football Fans Podcast. Today we have from Bentonville, Arkansas, Chris Long, known as The Real C. Long on Twitter. We talk about conference champions, where have the conference championships gone and do we really need them? Who's the best conference and does anybody really care? And also me and Rob try our new format out and see what you think. Sooner Football Fans is not associated with the University of Oklahoma, but we do have eligibility left. Boom. Hey, you Sooner Football fans, you got Terry and Rob here. Boomer Rob. Boomer Terry. Hey, uh, we're gonna, in the middle of changing our format. Uh, we're getting ready for the season to start just a couple of months away. So we're trying out something new. Um, we're going to have our guests on in the middle of a show. You, so you guys get to listen to me and Rob sit here and chitter-chatter Yay! all along. <laughs> so, um, you know, first off, how was your weekend? Hey, it was pretty good. Nice Father's Day. Spent time with, I have three boys, spent time with all three of them at the same time. That was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> how I never you? get to do that. Oh, not bad. We uh, got me a new Steelers chair and a new Steelers shirt. And, and a new Jeep. And a new Jeep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, not too bad. Went and ate some bison burgers at uh, the garage. I had to go put my Harley in the shop. So, And still don't know what's wrong with it? Still don't know what's wrong with it. Yeah, for those of y'all that don't know, Rob was a, uh, we were made a little trip down to Davis to Smoking Joe's Barbecue, which is amazing. Mm. And uh, on the way back, well, Rob was on the way back on his bike, and me and Teresa were gallivanting around Sulphur, fixing to go for a little swim and get a text from Rob. <laughs> Can you come back up I-35? <laughs> <laughs> on the side of the road. <laughs> Not a better place to be oh in Oklahoma God. than on I-35. Well, it's only 102, so I mean, you know. Yeah. But, uh, the, well, the first thing I think we ought to cover is um, our poll that we put out. And last week we talked to our fans about it that were on the podcast. Um and we're calling it uh, Caleb's Question of the Week, and every week we're going to have a question that, since Caleb won't come on until the season is on, we're allowing him to ask a question, because he's generally got some pretty good thought-provoking questions. So last week's Caleb's Question of the Week was uh, the last undefeated national uh, champion in football with, was Florida, Florida State in 2013. Um chances are this year's champion will lose a game. And we ask uh, Jason from the uh, the TFB Sooners uh, and the Angry Sooner, Corey Reedy, and Trilinda, who are all on the podcast last week, we asked them this question. So now we ask you guys the question. And we put it out on Twitter. And unfortunately, Twitter only has four blanks to put in there that you can put (laughs) an answer to. Well, they could just type in, which I think some of them did. Yeah, so uh, the choices I put out there were Army, Texas, Florida Atlantic, and then other, and for leave a con, uh, leave a comment. And um, Texas won the poll. It's maybe the only thing they'll win this year. <laughs> 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 but uh, with 37%, um, other uh, came in second, and we'll get into the others. And then Army uh came in third with 23 percent and then it doesn't seem like anybody's too awful worried about florida atlantic which well, how, how exactly was that question worded again um what game could the sooners lose to okay. this year all right so so people very, are more worried about army than they are fau yep more worried about army hmm. uh, most of um the comments were um you know UCLA uh, was a lot of the comments. Um, that's the team that's going to have the, the most like talent that we do. Mm-hmm. I mean, their talent's going to be closer to us than, say, Army. For instance, if we're just going to talk about it, the Army game, if we can shut down that, that outside run game, they're not going to run up the middle on us. Right. And they're done. I mean, we'll, we'll just steamroll them at that point. Right. I mean, if they have success, you know, running outside, then that's going to open up the middle, and so they're going to, you know, run in, run out, and move the ball. But if we can shut that down, yeah, that that guy, that guy, I'm not worried at all about that. Game. Right. Um, I was a little surprised that FAU wasn't a little bit higher, um, but a lot of people threw in the West Virginia game again, and I asked the same 
question is why the hell is everybody so high on West Virginia? They have been the last two years, and they missed the boat. So, Well, I think UCLA is going to have closer talent to us than uh, West Virginia is. Yeah. I could be wrong about that, and I hope I, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, hope, <laughs> I, hope I am. Kind of, but. Um, and then uh, the objective homer, I liked his uh, – <laughs> His answer, Iowa State, apparently. So, <laughs> falling back on. <laughs> hey, on we're not talking about last <laughs> year. Come on. <laughs> so, um, but it's an, in, you know, it's an interesting talk for the off season. We're, you know, we're pushing up here. We've, you know, we've talked about it is that we've got a, a really good, you know, I think a solid um, non-conference schedule. You know, so, um, nobody's a, you know, a yeah. sludge. Well, I mean, you know, Ohio State's not on there, so yeah, <laughs> Brandon was last year for us. Should be, but um, you know, so that was the result of it. We appreciate everybody, you know, uh, uh, Jason and and Angry Sooner and Corey Reedy and Trilinda for piping in on the podcast last week, and everybody who took place in the poll. And we're going to have another one that we're going to be asking uh, this week of our guests, and we'll put it out on Twitter for a poll this weekend. Um. And before we go much further, our little we're going to still do our little public service announcement uh, for the uh, Team Kyler Forever Foundation. That is still a go. Hey, I seen Lisa sporting this uh, yeah. wearing her shirt. <laughs> yeah, she got it. That and put was it on. And cool. I let her know that she um, she is now our model, and I put it all over Facebook <laughs> and uh, all Did over. Did she Twitter. have to sign a waiver? <laughs> nope. No, no, okay. all right. <laughs> so. Um, but um, if you don't know, if you haven't heard, uh, it's for the the family of Kyler Bonham has set up a foundation. Uh, the first thing they are doing is trying to get um, fees associated with his funeral and burial taken care of. And then they have actually set up a foundation uh, to help families in just that type of situation that they found themselves into in. Um, so well, number one is that you know, if you watch on, you look on Twitter, we do have a shirt out there that all the proceeds, we're calling it the Twitter Eye shirt, um, that all the proceeds of the sales will go to the foundation, as well as a uh, coffee mug that all the proceeds will go to the foundation. And also this Thursday, June 21st, from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. at Buffalo Wild Wings here in Norman, um, and it's on uh, Highway 77 and Highway 9. I'll be there. Yep, I'll be there too. <laughs> <laughs> um there's a mobile certificate we've been putting out on Twitter. If you show that mobile certificate, 10% uh, of your ticket will go to uh, the Team uh, Team Kyler Forever Foundation. It's a great cause. Um, just something that we they asked if we could help out. And, you know, hey, Buffalo Wild Wings is, um, you know, our favorite spot. They know us well there. Um, and they're more than willing to let us do stuff like that yeah, all the time. So. all the time. And uh, just so you know, happy hour is from five to seven. So, um, and then afterwards, you know, if people can't get there for happy hour, um, but, um, uh, it's like half price domestics and, um, uh, stuff like that there. And then, uh, Thursday night is also their 60 cent boneless wing night. So, um, you can get good food, have a good time. looks like there's going to be quite a few people there. So, um, if you can support it, um, as we, you know, post on, on, uh, Twitter, if you would please um, forward that post, uh, if you see it on Facebook, forward that post so uh, we can get as many people out there. And if you haven't ordered a shirt, um, order a shirt. The models on the front of it uh, we think are pretty good looking. Um, There's one there that's yeah. just he's pretty. Uh, <laughs> so um, did uh, you see uh, Riley's post today, uh, Lincoln Riley? I've seen that. <laughs> What do you have, about 52 crap in there? <laughs> Actually, I don't know. I think they were, uh, he had a bunch of them. I think it looked like trout. Ah. Maybe he was up in the, the great north um, on vacation for Father's Day, and the fish were obviously biting that day or today or yesterday, whenever it was. But are you much of a fisherman? Uh, not anymore. No, me uh, I, I grew up on a farm, and we did we did you know, I would fish with the shotgun right beside me. So I'd shoot something <laughs> when there wasn't no fish biting. But. Or a snake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too. Yeah, I haven't been fishing in years. Me and the wife keep talking about going, you know, getting back out there and fishing, but just never have got around to it, you know. So we're, I got too much other stuff takes yeah. up my time now. So Yeah, too, you know. Used to it was kids took up my time. I couldn't go fishing, and now it's just life. All the kids are grown, and now I can't get around to, 
to do anything. So mm-hmm. played some golf this morning though, so that was cool. No, yeah, you didn't half kill yourself. Didn't kill anybody else either. Didn't have to go into traction this morning nope. or this. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> that sucks. I need to get out on the golf course, but I haven't swung the clubs in two years. Well, you hadn't swung them in. It's been a while yeah, since about my, that time before my surgery. Know, so, yeah, because yeah, we didn't go at all last year. So, <clears throat> but um, no, it, it's. Uh, good day for it, though. Well, I live on a golf course, so I can just go right out the front door. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm on the course, so that's pretty nice. Can, can you play year round there? Do they do they have it running year round? Well, they can't tell me no. No, they could. If you don't ask for permission. Yeah, just go out there and start hitting it. <laughs> yeah. That's like when uh, they closed Brookside here that year when we were going to Brookside, and uh, they closed it down, and we didn't know it, but there were people out there playing it. I mean, it, <laughs> the greens were still cut, and. Uh, but it had been shut down for a week, and people were just walking out there hitting the ball. But, you know, instead of paying their high green fee of, what, $6, I think is what their green fee was there at Brookside. Yeah, that was something crazy. Yeah, but people still wanted to play it for free. But anyway, um, off-season stuff. Anything going on that we need to jump on and talk about? We've kind of kicked around the the – Oh, uh, the schedule. We beat it to death a little bit. A little bit. Talked about uh, Lincoln fishing. So I'm off all this week, but last week, uh, you know, all the players were still here, and and uh, some of those guys, I don't, you know, you obviously don't know them without their number. Uh, I don't know what they look like, most of them. Yeah. But uh, some of those guys are just, they've been hitting it hard since last football season. <laughs> There's some guys that walked in front of me, and, of course, they've been working out already, so. I mean, just chiseled out of granite. And I'm like, hey, you got the body I was supposed to have. <laughs> 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 but some of those guys are just massive. And I, and I was thoroughly impressed with the, uh, how, what the receiver, C.D. Lamb, I think. Yeah. He was out on the turf field, and I was up on the second floor looking down into, into that turf field. And I'm just going to tell you, that kid is quick. Oh, yeah. Like, you, <laughs> you have no idea. He is just fast so i couldn't yeah well and they've been uh posting uh the uh football program i don't guess the football program their uh, strength and conditioning have been posting videos this week and they got some big boys that are got some uh, quickness to them they put a post on twitter today uh, big men big men quick feet and they were running through drills and anymore though watching that stuff just makes me tired <laughs> <laughs> Hell, I can't sit through a baseball game on TV without taking a nap anymore, so I have become <laughs> my dad. Oh, boy. But, um, anyway, looking through, uh, we've been scrolling through Twitter, um, you know, today, and, um, you know, everybody you can tell are just getting antsy uh, for uh, football. <laughs> Every day somebody's got the countdown. Yeah, somebody's mm-hmm. out there. 75 days, you know, 74 days. Yeah, so... Um, Which actually might be making it a little longer. Yeah, it makes it feel... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, more season tickets went on sale today. Um, I didn't know they had still had open season tickets, but uh, they went on sale today at 10. I bet you they're not on sale anymore. I wonder, does everybody know that we're getting a new screen in the uh, in the north end zone? I don't know, but I, I saw it the other day coming down... Sooner Road strapped down. I was like, "What in the world could that be?" It was massive. Man, it's gonna be nice. <laughs> it's gonna be nice for, especially for the people in the south end zone. <laughs> yeah, because you know, don't looking at the around. little mm-hmm. nineteen-inch screen across. <laughs> yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be really nice. They're gonna like it. Yeah, um, but it, it just more and more stuff. I don't know what else they can put into that stadium unless they're gonna next thing you know raise the capacity of it and. Stack more stuff on top. Honestly, I haven't heard of you know, the capacity going up, but I I do know that the west side, upper west side, is going to get uh, some sort of an upgrade. I don't yeah. know if it, I know that uh, you know some of the media stuff is going to get upgraded, but you know all the original sky boxes or whatever you call them are over there, so those are going to those are apparently going to get an upgrade. Yeah. Uh, well, I know you know we being up there in it, those uh. Coaches boxes and press boxes are in that hallway outside of it. 
<laughs> That's some claustrophobic stuff right there, buddy. <laughs> it's already way too high for me to be up there. Mm. But when you're up there and the hallway ain't but about, I mean, I'm t- you know, not just because me and Rob are big guys, but there's no way me and Rob could pass each other oh, in that no. hallway. Oh, no. Behind, uh, you know, all the... I don't know how they got Mangino down there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is it is a tiny little place. The rooms are, are tiny. And, you know, I don't, I, I still don't see how they can, you know, you can see how a game, you know, opens up and evolves from there. But really, I think it's almost too far away for even coaches to be. Well, I think they got binoculars and stuff, but more, more over, they're looking at, uh, you know, schemes and how, how they're setting up yeah. and stuff. So they don't really get to, you know, see the, the close ups that we want to see. But, right. I don't like it up there. Of course, everybody knows. <laughs> Uh, if they don't, me and Terry both are just, I'm scared of heights, and I don't mind telling you. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I don't, I, <laughs> I still got my man card <laughs> because I'm just, I don't know, I'm just scared of heights. And uh, when you go all the way up to the top of the west side, and Terry knows this, there's yeah. an elevator. You, you come out of the elevator, and there's only a half wall there and nothing else. Yeah. No glass, no screen. You could. Fall right out onto the field, <laughs> it seems like. I don't know. And you can see Tinker Field from there oh, God, easily. It's horrible. Yeah, and it's just, I mean, it, you, you literally look straight down on everything. It is the most uncomfortable yes. feeling. Yeah. Don't at us. <laughs> <laughs> and there was, you know, Teresa always likes to tell the story. We were up on the east side up towards the top, and... She went wandering out, and me and Rob were standing over there on the other side, and there was nobody in the stadium. And she goes walking out, and my, you know, my wife had, you know, Teresa has a bad back, and has had a lot of um, health issues here recently. But she goes walking out there, and I hollered at her to come back, and she goes, "I'm fine." And I was like, "No, you're not, <laughs> because if you fall down." I can't come and get you. And Rob goes, neither can I. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> She'd have just been laying out there on the. <laughs> she said, I'm fine. And we said, we're not. Yeah. <laughs> come back over here. I don't know what's wrong with you. Yeah, it just, ugh. But it's just something that's, and you, uh, you should have seen this when we rode the, uh, oh, when we're skiing up in Colorado, the mm-hmm. snow lift. Mm-hmm. We didn't do the, you know, me and Rob in the same snow lift was, I'm sure, comical to everybody. I'm pretty sure that the grips where I was holding <laughs> on to that pipe, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I indented it. Yeah, but, so, yeah, but I mean, the stadium, it, it just keeps getting bigger and better. Um, you know, you just wonder what's next, you know, I mean, because it seems like they do something massive like this every time. You know, there's a big push in, in what we do. You know, for for instance, we won the national championship. The next thing we know, we got the east side built up. Uh, we get to a semifinal game, and they redo the south end zone. <laughs> got to another semifinal game, and if we get to another one and an, you know, or a national title or something, they're going to do something that seems like that's what keys them to do more. I don't know, but there's there's really nothing they can do to top what's going on in the south end zone yeah i mean it's just impressive and i haven't been to a lot of stadiums but it's it's very impressive if you've not had a tour through there i highly recommend you do that oh yeah and you know we were talking about it last year when we went down to jerry's world you know they kept talking about you know the the cowboys uh locker room you know uh, you know it's you know imported you know african mahogany or something like that and so we were expecting to walk into this palace and it looked like a high school locker room with <laughs> compared to yeah to Sooners, <laughs> it is it, i promise you the, you know the facilities we have i don't think are you know sec- they're second to none you, you know they're i know everybody is upgrading and uh, well, apparently oregon's pretty nice and uh i guess texas um i'm sorry I'm texas. <laughs> texas is is pretty nice and i guess even osu's got you know some nice trophy cases down there to house all their helmets, but yeah, uh, it it had to be pretty good to be better than ours. Yeah, you know, I know Clemson did an upgrade. I think they were putting a water slide in theirs in their training room and stuff like that, uh, golf simulator and things. You know, which is you know that's the the world we live in now. Well, uh, <clears throat> a few years back, I took a tour of the uh, Atlanta Braves locker room. I don't know if you've ever been in any major league locker rooms, but they have got a putting green down there just just across from their uh, locker room and the whole back wall the you know 
two it's a closed in by a back wall and a side wall and the those walls are Augusta National, of <laughs> course. And I mean, it's big. It's you know, it's, yeah. it's a big putting green. But uh, we don't have that, or at least I haven't seen one. Yeah, we don't have it that we know of. So, <laughs> but it's definitely, you know, definitely getting bigger and better. Um, you know, and, and it's crazy that you think you know there's really nowhere to go but up from there. You know, just getting more more things for the fan and the involvement, you know, so it'll be interesting if we... That's not for the fan. Yeah. <laughs> the part I'm talking about is for the student athlete. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, you walk in, you know, I know uh, Herb Street went through it with uh, Baker last year, and, you know, they got the fingerprint entrance, you know, I guess only if you got certain fingerprints, you can get into certain, you know, areas, and, you know, it, it's, it's pretty cool, state-of-the-art, you know, Back in you know back in our day, you were lucky to you know, <laughs> you know get a new pair of cleats to. And just the weight room is just amazing. Yeah, I mean it. It had to take them a month to get all those weights in there, but it's it's pretty fantastic. And of course, the weight room is setting right on an indoor practice field. Right. I mean, it's not a full field, but it's like for speed drills and stuff like that. Yeah. But it's you know it's fairly big. Yeah. I mean, you throw a football in there, no problem. <laughs> But anyway, well, let's go ahead and uh, get to our guest. Uh, like I said, this is a new format for us, so it'll be a little bit different. And on the phone with us, um, all the way from Bentonville, Arkansas, he's originally from Oklahoma. Um, he's a blogger for the Prairie Report. Um, you see him on uh, Twitter all the time, the real C. Long. We have uh, Chris Long. He's got his beer in his hand, he said, and ready to talk Sooner football. So, boom it, Chris. Yes, sir, I do. Sooner. How's it going? Hey, y'all doing tonight? I'm doing all right. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. Sitting around, uh, being lazy and talking football. What you know? What's better to to get to do in you know every day as much as we can, other than that, especially sooner football. So, oh yeah, no doubt. No, not, not better better than that. Yeah, for sure. So, tell us a little bit about yourself. You said you're from Oklahoma originally. Tell us, tell us all yeah, I, uh, the sooner sooner fans to know about you. Well, I was uh, born and raised in Poto, Oklahoma, which is in southeast Oklahoma. Um, I uh, ride on the side uh, as a hobby for the Prairie Report. Um, got my start actually with uh, Fan Sided. Um, it's a um, fan blog website that's affiliated with Sports Illustrated. And um, yeah, I did that for know, about a year and a half. And then um, I met up with. Uh, Mad with the Prairie Report and been running for them, and now I'm, you know, we're contributing Prairie Report uh, articles through uh, Sooner Reloaded, right. and we've been doing that for gosh a couple of months now. So I wrote a couple articles, and you know, I didn't write anything major. Just uh, I just basically dismantled college football was was all on one of them, <laughs> and <laughs> so nothing major there, but. Um, no, and that's something I enjoy doing, you know, writing and um, talking about football. I mean, that's two of the big things. And um, my day job, I'm actually a uh, physical therapist assistant. So, you know, um, two very contrasting, um, two very contrasting um, careers, I right. guess you'd say. <laughs> um, but no, I enjoy what I do, you know, both writing and doing my actual day job. So, um, get a lot of enjoyment out of both of them. So um, your Twitter handle is the real C Long. Was there a you know mix up in the Chris Longs, the C Longs, that or or where did that come from? <laughs> well, actually, uh, you know, talking about my day job, uh, whenever I started working in Muskogee, uh, my login name was Klong, C Long, and uh, my all my coworkers called me Klong. <laughs> so that's actually where that came from. Oh, okay, so. It wasn't that somebody got you mixed up on Twitter. It was just what you just gave everybody in the no. in the world your login ID too. By the way, so well, all three listeners yeah. of ours. So <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, hey, I didn't give you the password. Yeah, <laughs> Kennedy password? from the Royals just hung one, and Adrian Beltre tattooed it for a three-run home run. Now, just FYI, you, you've got to understand. We all, you know, everybody <laughs> probably tired of hearing this, but in our little studio, makeshift studio in here. I have my face in the 
computer screen. And I get to watch baseball. And Rob has the sports on and the TV <laughs> over my shoulder. So Rob will, from time to time, just, nice. just bark in a random, um, you know, sports play. Well, uh, I'm watching the Rangers, which I know, you know, sooner Lisa loves the Rangers, right? <laughs> So I, I don't just, think so. I, yeah, I'm just updating her <laughs> on the score, five to nothing, you know. <laughs> so so you will know if something, you know, sports-related hits, or like I say, or if, uh, um, what's the girl? Or something terrible happens. No, uh, <laughs> yeah, terrible, or um, what's her name, your race car driver girlfriend? Danica Patrick. Danica Patrick. If there's a commercial c- comes on of Danica Patrick, Rob will let us all know. We're going to watch that. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, you know. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> Rob gets quiet. It's because Danica is on is on <laughs> is on the show. And then there was a one night I think I almost had to throw stuff at him because I put it on the NCAA beach volleyball tournament, and uh, he didn't. Hardly, I don't know about that. <laughs> he didn't Come hardly contribute at all. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but um. Well, hey, Rob, I, I don't blame you, man. I mean, I, I probably would be doing the same, honestly. So <laughs> I, I won't feel bad. Yeah, I I don't. I'm a happily married man, and you know. Uh, Rob's always trying to corrupt you me. You did. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what we started doing, like uh, you know, Caleb, uh, my my son, are the the third party of the Three Musketeers. Um, he's twenty five years old. You know, doesn't want to be on the pod. You know, wanted to start a podcast with us, and then doesn't want to be on the podcast during off season because there's nothing to talk about. Uh, so what he did last week was gave us a question, and it was a good question. He actually was going to come on, and he was like, man, I'm just going to piss everybody off. Um, and that was our Twitter question. I don't know if you saw it, where it's, you know, more than likely, you know, Oklahoma's going to lose a game. So, who you know, who do you think is going to lose? And we'll just go ahead and ask you that one first. Did you th- who do you think Oklahoma's more likely to lose to? Preseason or season? Yeah. Uh, okay. If you go well, ahead. No, I actually got a good feeling that we'll win the bowl game. Um, gosh, you know, I'm actually, I'm, I'm actually torn. I mean, I'm, I'm debating anywhere between twelve and one, eleven and two. Yeah. Um, I'll go worst case scenario. Um, two losses. I'll say TCU and um, UCLA be the most likely losses, but Oklahoma gets TCU back in a Big Twelve rematch, championship rematch. And, and for the one loss, I would probably just say TCU. I mean, TCU to me is, you know, yeah, they lost a lot on offense and everything, but golly, you know, and, and they lost on defense, but you can't count Gary Patterson out. I mean, you just can't. Yeah, they're going to pick up. you'd be forced to do so. No doubt about it. Well, and he, you know, the, just from what he said at the end of the Big 12 championship game was the off, you know, you know that he's spending his time during the off season this year studying Oklahoma tape because he was stumped. You know, at the end of the game, uh, the Big 12 game, he was like, you know, that offense, it's just got so many weapons and it's so versatile. You know, best of luck to whoever gets to play them. I mean, you know, we racked up. Well, and, you know, and yeah, I, I get we did lose to Georgia, but, you know, yeah. Georgia did also give up uh, school record points, yards, and uh, first downs. And, I mean, they, they got mauled. I mean, it's just, yeah. you know, and being the OU fan watching that game, I mean, that, that was a worse loss, you know. Not, it's probably going to sound crazy to say this, but it's actually a worse loss for me to lose to Georgia the way we did, oh, yeah. than it was to lose to Boise State. Oof. To lose <laughs> Boise State, I mean that was, I mean that was terrible and all. But you know, if you want to throw in the Alabama fans' excuse, oh, well, we didn't care. Yeah. Um. You know. I, I mean. Yeah. You know, we play in Boise State. You know, yeah, it's uh, you know one of the worst defeats in college football history, considering who Oklahoma is. But you know, it's one of those things that just losing the Georgia the way Oklahoma lost to Georgia was. Just, I mean, I, I'm every time I talk about the Rose Bowl, I just get this pit in my stomach and I feel bitter. I mean, just absolutely <laughs> bitter. <laughs> yeah, we know that feeling. And it really sucks that one of my, and it really sucks that one of my coworkers, uh, she's friends with one of the uh, defensive coaches of Georgia. So anyway, she talks about that, you know, talk, talks about her friends who are on the coaching staff in Georgia. And I'm just like, Ugh. <laughs> you know, and the, the interesting thing, you know, we went to it this year, went to the Rose Bowl and just the deflate. I've never, you know, I've never walked out of a stadium just deflated, you know, with that feeling, you know what I mean? Cause it was, it was such a good, it really was a good game. It was a fun game to watch. And, 
you know, you just – and most of the time if Oklahoma loses a close game like that, you know, the fans are all – you know, I've been around, you know, a long time. The fans are all pissed off out in the parking lot screaming and stuff. And everybody was, I think, kind of like me and you. Don't you think, Rob? They were just kind of like, you know, yeah, we needed to get one stop on defense. And, you know, they all threw out all the same things we all did. But if we could have just, just played three quarters of, of defense yeah. <laughs> instead of just two quarters of defense, I think we still would have won. Yeah. You know, and it was just, just a. Well, uh, and, and keep in mind, I was at the Iowa State game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that, you know, that game, I that that's one that everybody was mad about, you know, and, and rightfully. So. Oh, I was pissed. Yeah. I mean, I you know, and I I got I got perfect seats. Like I was in the uh, south end, zone, north end zone, dead center of the big video board. Yeah. About. 25 rows up, you know, just, just dead center with the video board. And, you know, and I just I had a bird's eye view of us losing. I had a bird's eye view of that Iowa State player running out and playing the little, Iowa, the little <laughs> tiny, the little, teeny uh, tiny state flag. Iowa flag on a 47-yard <laughs> line. Yeah. Apparently they don't teach 50-yard uh, lines at uh, Iowa State, I guess. I don't know. But uh, anyway, it was just like, so I had a bird's eye view of all of that. And I'm like, oh, my God, what did I just watch? Yeah, well, me, me and Rob always go to uh, the coaches show uh, that they do. It's on the radio and it's on TV um, at, um, what's the name of the barbecue place? Rudy's. Rudy's Barbecue. And mm -hmm. there was pretty good crowds except for after that game. I mean, that place was normally packed. You know when when they had the coaches show, but it was it was about half full that night, wasn't it? After mm -hmm. after that game, it was like woof. <laughs> nobody wanted to come out. Nobody talk wanted about that loss. <laughs> nobody wanted to hear anything well, about we didn't that want loss. To either, well, but. you know, and we give Texas fans such a bad rap about losing to Kansas, which they deserve it because you know they're Texas fans. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you know they were like, oh, hey, you lost to Iowa State. Yeah, you lost to Iowa State, I'm like. Okay, you realize you're saying this in the ranked fifteenth now, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, and I mean, good God, guys. But like we said, and that's what that's why we brought the question up is that, uh, and it, you know, because the last undefeated champion was Florida State in 2013, and you know, uh, everybody but I guess Central Florida last year lost a game. It, it's just damn near impossible to go undefeated, and it's you know, unless you're Alabama you need to lose strategically, you know, and Oklahoma has been the proof mm -hmm. of that is it's, it's not. Well, you know, the, the earlier you lose, the better it is. I mean, you know, had Oklahoma say lost to West Virginia last game of the season instead of Iowa state, you know, yeah. we're not going to play off. I mean, no. there's nothing to recover. I mean, there's not enough time to recover. All right. The only team, the only team that gets to recover from a late season loss is Alabama, you know, <laughs> and yeah. You know, they, they, they don't even – and that's, you know, we'll get into that when the season gets here and when it starts getting there. I, 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 if you can't win your own conference or be in the conference championship, at least in the conference championship game, you shouldn't be in the playoffs. Well, they validated it. Oh, not at all. When they won out and won the championship, they validated that pick yeah. of them getting in over – Well, you know, what well, would have been nice if, uh, you know, Alabama win did what Ohio State did. Because, like, uh, you know, Alabama just counted that whole argument. It's like, you know, oh, yeah, you don't, you know, win your, win your conference and you don't deserve to play for a championship. Well, then Ohio State win the egg 31 to 0. And it's yeah. just like, ah, well, yeah. thanks, thanks, Bear <laughs> Saban. No, you, you can't, I mean, you can't count out Nick Saban, but, you know, yeah. the dude's won how many national championships. But, um, I mean, it's just. You know, you, like you go, like it was poor. Op it was literally poor. Op I mean, you go, you get blank thirty-one to zero, and then you turn around, and then very same scenario. Then you know, the person, you know, the team ends up winning in that same scenario. So it's like, okay, well, you know, they were right. Ohio State did. Look what Alabama did. Yeah, and you know, there it's going to, you know, probably I don't know if it'll be in mine and Rob's lifetime, but it, you know, I, I it's going to have to go to you know, a bigger playoff system, I think, eventually, because the same thing is already now, what are we, three, four, five years into the playoff system? And it's already getting the bumps that, you know, the BCS system had. It's, you know, mm -hmm. there there's teams that are deserving to get the opportunity that it's nothing but a human element that's picking those people to go into it. 
Well, if anybody else from the Power Five, like FAU, went undefeated, it would be a, a way bigger deal than it was this year. Right. So, well, here, here's something for you guys. You know, talking about what if Alabama got in ahead of Wisconsin, despite the you know, say if Wisconsin beat Ohio State and went undefeated in the Big Ten, and won the conference, and Alabama still got in over them. I mean that that would have been that, yeah. that probably would have ended the 14 playoff right there. Yeah. And you know what? Given the uh, you know certain four letter network. Yeah. <laughs> and given um, and given. Um, you know, a certain three letter conference, so, you know, yeah. letter conference. I mean, that, that, that never will happen, you know, because everyone says, oh, the SEC is so freaking tough. And they're not. And, <laughs> they're not you tough. know, Wisconsin's strength of schedule really wasn't that great. I mean, yeah, they, they did what they were supposed to, won all their, you know, in that scenario, would have won all their games. But the flip side, it's just like, oh, well, but, you know, you know it, it just, I mean, what, it basically says, well, okay, what's the point, you know, if that had happened in, in that fashion, well, what's the point of playing a championship, a conference championship game? Right. Well, there isn't any. There's none. Well, we I mean, yeah, I get extra football, which yeah. is nice for me, but that, that's about all it boiled down to. Well, we talked about it, you know, before, too, is that conference championships used to mean something. And Herb Street brought it up on the selection show when they selected Alabama over Ohio State. He was like, they. You used to have, take pride in winning your your uh, conference, and you know Ohio State. If they would win, they would you know go to the you know the Rose Bowl, Oklahoma. You know, it was the Orange Bowl. I mean, you know when we played Nebraska back in the day, you'd score a touchdown regardless of what team it was. You know the 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 fans would start bombarding the the field with oranges. You know, there was mm-hmm. something about winning a conference title. And it has to go back to the same thing because now, you know, you, you can be the conference title. You know, hey, we're, you know, well, let's just, uh, you know, use an example. We're three-time, you know, conference champions, but n- n- none of those three times have, have maybe that team been in the playoff, you know, got it, made it to the playoffs. They've got to make it to where winning that conference gets you something other than, you know, well, we got the top four teams in the playoff, and the rest of you guys get to be in the major bowls. I, they're going to have to do more than that. Well, there's a whole other story. Well, you know, and everyone, everyone screams about the 13th data point until it doesn't. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, this really matters until it doesn't. You know, it's just, and that's exactly what happened this year, you know. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Oklahoma had not played the Big Bowl championship game. Now, it would have helped them last year had they got, you know, because that would have been the 13th data point that everyone's talking about. But then this year, it was like Oklahoma didn't have to have it. I mean, they would have been the second seed, most likely, regardless, or maybe the third. I mean, it, either way, they would have still won the Rose Bowl without that 13 data point. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, <clears throat> you know, just to say Oklahoma wins the Big 12, but we do have, say, a couple of, of conference losses, and we wind up winning it anyway. But if you got two SEC teams, which they already crown the SEC the best conference in the league, and – Maybe they both go into that. Have they Arkansas play? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but if they go into that SEC championship game and they're both undefeated and one of them has one loss, they're gonna they're, that team is going to make it in before a two- or a three-loss Oklahoma, even mm-hmm. if we win the Big 12. Yeah. Well, you, you definitely. But, you know, I'm actually one of these that I just don't give a crap about conferences. I mean, you know, everyone says, oh, the best conference, the best conference, you know. Um. But what is the best conference? Is it the one team at the top that beats the crap out of everybody else? I mean, what what is you know like like you know Alabama for example? It's like oh they play a grueling schedule, and then you look at their schedule. It's like Arkansas fifty two zero Vanderbilt win over Arkansas <laughs> uh, win over Kentucky forty nine to seven right yeah uh, Vanderbilt fifty two zero Florida forty one thirteen. I mean it's like well I mean okay so are they are teams intentionally been you know bending over for Alabama for the good of the conference? I don't think so. I mean, right. if you listen to if you listen to SEC fans talk about it, it's like, I mean, that's exactly what they're doing. And yeah. it's like, well, how's that helping the conference? Other than, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, if, if you ever watch Parks and Rec with Ron Swanson on there, you know, talking about, you know, government and, um, you know, it's just like the SEC is, um, you know, all the SEC teams are, Suckling the teat of Alabama until they have sore chap nipples. You know, I mean, just, <laughs> you know, it's just. Yeah, we know that feeling. There's, there's, well, no, there's just no logic with the SEC chanting. There's no logic with 
Big 12 chanting, in which I know most Big 12 teams don't do that. Um, but, you know, but people, you know, you see the ACC doing it now. Yeah. And I don't know if it's just because, you know, like I said, that four-letter network, a certain four-letter network now has a ACC network coming out. And you're seeing that. I don't know if ESPN's like telling people, oh, hey, you know, you guys got to support the conference, support the conference. I mean, to me, it's just dumb. You know, you got to look at each individual team. I mean, yeah, you know, every team, every conference has, every conference has teams like Kansas. Every conference has teams like Alabama, you know, really good or really terrible. I mean, there's no, there, there's not a conference that has every team in conference winning eight games. I mean, it, that's, I mean, it, it's mathematically impossible for one thing, and you can't really judge conference strength like that. Right. And, you know, that's why, and I actually wrote about that, you know, because I, I was just thinking of a different way to do college football, and, you know, and if, if y'all haven't read it, um, it's uh, articles on reloadstats.com uh, sooners, uh, reloaded uh, slash sooners, um, and it's uh, called Fixing College Football, and basically it outlines, outlines a system to where I actually took all 64 or 65 Power 5 teams, and then I kicked Kansas out because, you know, obviously they don't count. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I took 32 teams, and I put them in 1A. I took 32 teams, and I put them in 1B, and then just to continue the example, I, I went ahead and did like the mid-majors, like Tulsa, Houston's, um, Fresno State, and I put them in 1C, a 32-team league, and gave each league its own ability to play its own playoff, play its for its own national championship game, and I wrote a part two to that article because I got into a Georgia discussion with another Sooner fan over it. And basically what it ended up being was I, I took away all those five and seven bowl games right? and basically turned into a gold, silver, bronze system where, you know, your bronze team, level teams, were, you know, nine, nine and, let's say, 13 games. So it would be, you know, 10 and three, nine and four teams playing each other. And we didn't lose... You know, in, the, in that system that I outlined, you didn't lose, every, you know, it, it's like 41 bowl games, and it was 39 in my system. So you only lost two bowl games. Right. And it's, it's just high-quality football. But, you know, but can you really determine conference strength like that, though? You know, like, you know, you just, you really can't. I mean, it's just hard because, I mean, everybody's got a crap team. Everyone's got a whipping boy. Everyone's got a middle of the road team that, eh, you know, any given story, they can either get blown out or blow somebody out. Like, you know, for example, Iowa State. Iowa State, exactly, yeah. Last season. And then you got your national championship contenders, your Oklahoma's, your Ohio State's, your Alabama's, USC's, um, you know. It, it's just, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I, I wish we would get away from conference chess beating and just more go into statistics or go into – yeah, you know, looking at individual teams. Well, I, I, I'm still in the the belief that what was it three, four years back when the mega conferences were looked like were fixing to happen. Um, you know, when Missouri left and Nebraska, and you know, apparently Oklahoma and Texas threw the monkey wrench in it. But I think it was some of the you know the SEC and other these other conferences going. You know what? We're going to have four huge conferences, and you're going to play. You know, north and south, or east and west. Eight teams in each side. Yeah, and then you, you know, you're going to, you know, the winner of each, you know, division in their conference plays for the conference. Just like pro does, plays for the conference champion. They go mm -hmm. into the playoff. That's what I would prefer to to see. Is you know, put pro football does it, high school football does it, NAIA does it. You win your conference. You win your division. You know, and let's face there's been teams, there's been NFL teams that, you know, didn't deserve to be in, you know, in the playoffs, but they won their conference. Mm -hmm. You know, they, you know, they may have been beaten by, you know, another conference third place team twice in a season. You just, but it was, hey, handle your home business, which is your conference, and you get the opportunity to move into that. Um, that's the only way I see that they'll ever get the human element out of it is, you know, because right now it's, you know, before it was computers, nobody liked the computers picking too much. And, you know, there, there was this and that, 
which I prefer, you know, kind of preferred, you know, it was, you knew there was no bias in it. And now we got a, you know, a room full of elites <laughs> sitting around going, who do we put in? And we, and it's good for Oklahoma because we're blue blood. We've got a brand, you know, it had, we mm-hmm. had, we been had when TCU and Baylor been tied for the, the big 12 that year, if one of those teams would have been Oklahoma, you know, we'd have been in the playoffs. Because it's Oklahoma. Or, you know, go back to uh, what started this whole 14 playoff, you know, LSU, Alabama. Right. You know, if it was Oklahoma instead of um, Oklahoma State, does Oklahoma get more ballot, you know, right. to play LSU? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that's a, but, I mean, you, you see what I'm talking about, though. I mean, you, you know, everybody mm-hmm. knows that, that Baylor and TCU got slated. You know, kick to the curb because oh, especially they TCU because yeah. TCU was in the top three the entire time. They won their conference, or they won. You know, they won their games, got a share of it. Still was third, and then all of a sudden they just dropped to six. Right, you know, and the the reason why is they don't have a fan base. You know, they ha- their fan mm-hmm. base is small. They don't have that logo. Yeah, they don't have the logo on the side of their helmet, and. and it, facts are facts. That's what happened. I mean, had that been Oklahoma, had it been Texas, um, hell, maybe even Arkansas. But I mean, you know, teams that are more, you know, TCU is a regional. You know, they have a regional following. Baylor has a regional following. You know, you don't you don't see thousands of ba- of Baylor or TCU fans in California. You don't see them in Florida. But by God, you see Oklahoma fans out, you know, all over the place, mm-hmm. you know, in the droves. So it, it's just a fact that regardless of what they want to say, money drives it. Because if they put TCU in there, nobody's going to watch TCU, uh, a TCU national title game to where more people would watch, you know, a TCU anybody, you know, pick anybody that you want them to play, TCU Alabama. Nobody's going to watch that because everybody's going to figure Alabama is going to throttle them because it's little bitty TCU, and they may and they may not. But it's just well, it's not going to yeah, then they, uh, get people to tune into the TV to watch it. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, and then you, you make the counter arguments. Well, look how they did to Ole Miss in the bowl game because Ole Miss beat Alabama, and then they go and right. beat the crap out of Ole Miss 41-3. to three, You know, yeah. That's the thing, though. Like you said, the human element, you just don't know. You can't, you can't read the future or... To where if it was, you know, or if it was just cut and dry, we're gonna, you know, put sixty four teams into into conferences and to into four mega conferences. You know, you win your division, first round of the playoffs is your conference championship, and then you work your way on down. But we'll probably never mm-hmm. see that. So, do you think our logo is going to get better? I mean, I, obviously, I think it is with the jump man. Um, I think it's just going to get more popular. I mean, it's still OU on the side of the helmet. Right. But if, if you can do anything to make that better, I think we did. Yeah, what do you think about the jump man? Well, you know, I actually am a big fan of the uh, the bigger logo. I mean, I know some people don't like it, um, but I'm, I'm actually a huge fan of it. I actually think it looks better. Um, you know, when you look at the two helmets, sad, you know, yeah. you watch an old game um, from last season, you watch uh, the spring game, it's like, yeah, that looks nice. Yeah. I mean, and I was recently, for Father's Day, uh, actually got me some jump man uh Jump man stuff with the new logo on it and the new lettering. I love. I mean, the new lettering even looks awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big. I'm a big fan of it for sure. <laughs> well, and I, you know, again, it's a. I guess we're one of what it's. Michigan has the jump man. Who else has the jump man? There's not very many schools. Okay. Uh, as far <laughs> off the top of my head, it's Michigan, Florida, us, and North Carolina. Yeah. So off the top, of my head, I think it's just four. Yeah. So I mean, it's a big deal. Um, you know, it, it, the the only thing that bothers me is I'm you know I'm a football fan. You know, I'm I'm very you know probably my least favorite sport to watch um, is basketball, and not just college. I'm talking about any basketball, uh, primarily because I'm only five foot nine and I never really played basketball. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, right. you know, I mean, uh, it it looks like almost every shirt is a basketball shirt that's my only but again i'm not you know i'm not a 20 year old kid being recruited you know getting jump man gear tossed at him you know every time they turn around so it would probably be different if i was you know that young um but it just seems like you know even a football shirt you got jordan flying across it 
you know, it still kind of, it kind of looks like a basketball shirt, regardless of whether there's a football mm-hmm. on it. And I said this too on, on, uh, Twitter one time I got, I can't remember who I was in a conversation with cause I run our Twitter account and it was as long, you know, I'm okay with it as long as we don't get a jump man at the 20 yard line on the football field on either side, you know, but yeah, and I, I can't see that happening. <laughs> but then again, I mean, many talks. But, I mean, you know, the, oh, yeah. if, if they go to the, you know, uh, jump man goes to the big 12 and says, Hey, you know, across your big 12 logo, we'll put a jump man and we'll do this. You know, you never know, but I would hate to see Michael Jordan on a, you know, football field I mean, <laughs> we already had him on the damn right. baseball field so <laughs> you know we don't need him on a football right. field <laughs> mm-hmm. um you know i always get into arguments with uh, our good buddy uh sooner brizzy um for whatever reason he hates the uh, the roughneck uniforms or the oh, rubber really? uniforms and, and you know and i tell him like you know dude you actually have a better win percentage you know one of the arguments i use on is like dude you know we actually have a better winning percentage in the rough of rough riders than we do their traditional uniforms. Oh, you're talking about. I mean, it, it's. You're talking about the the yeah the the, the you know, I thought you were talking about the roughnecks the the wagon guys and their uniforms. You're talking about the oh no 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 the, the, I said rough hey, yeah I said yeah. roughnecks I meant rough riders yeah, I was okay. talking about the uh, the teams uniforms okay yeah so the the alternate uniforms yeah. Uh, so, but, uh, anyway, you know, and, that, and that's kind of how I feel about the, the jump man, you know, same, same thing. I mean, it, it's, it's not the uniforms that win or lose ball games. It's, it's the, um, it's the, um, it's the people in the uniforms and, um, you know, and if we end up losing the lane kiff and I mean, you know, that's going to be brought up. Oh yeah. We shouldn't have changed uniforms. <laughs> that's what's tradition. <laughs> but, so how would yeah, you, how would you feel that, uh, that, that, that bigger OU helmet really, you know, screwed the pooch for us. Yeah, really yeah. good. <laughs> so how would you feel if we went to uh, uh, a regular alternate uniform, kind of like, you know, the Pokes do? Well, I mean, I, I'm i not like a hardcore traditionalist, but I would not want to go every week. I mean, doing what Oklahoma does, you know, one one road game, one home game is is more than sufficient. Um, you know, because I, I do enjoy the traditional look, um, but you know that that's Oklahoma State's gimmicks, that's Oregon's gimmick. You know, let 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 the uh, let them have that gimmick. I mean, I, I would rather us, you know, keep true to ourselves and just do, you know, one game home, one game away, and then call it good. Yeah. Now my feelings wouldn't be hurt if you know they came out and said, "Hey, we're we're moving on from this uniform and doing this one." Because I mean, you know, if you look back at OU uniform history, oh yeah, um, you know, we've we've made a lot of changes in the in the past. I mean, yeah. um, Since our original time. uniform looked a lot like Ohio State's original uniform, yeah, and it had feathers on it, which was which was a nice touch. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, and, and it does, you know the style you know the styles change and everything but i think there's teams you know like oklahoma like alabama um that you know, i just i being a traditionalist being an old guy is you know we've said it before and it's been talked about you've probably heard it too is you know we're, we don't want to be a uniform of the week that that's for people you know who who want to bring attention to their program i would rather bring attention to our program by winning you know, by beating Ohio mm-hmm. State, by um, uh, doing those things, you know, let Oregon do that. Let Oklahoma State do that. You know, if I personally, I, if I was Oregon, I'd be pissed at everybody because Oregon was the only team that did that for the longest time. Mm-hmm. And it was actually a novelty. You know, I used to watch, you know, you'd, you'd want to go tune into the Oregon game to see what, if they were wearing mirrored helmets this time <laughs> or, yeah. or what, yeah, right. you know, and it was their thing and it was cool. Well then now it, it, it's, it's no longer a novelty. You know what I mean? It was, that was Oregon's thing and it should have been, you know, instead all these schools started going to, you know, multiple alternates, you know, and I'm like, I don't mind, I don't mind it. I don't want to see a complete change of it, but I did kind of prefer what they did when Jason White was here, had the throwback jerseys. 
you know, kind of like what the mm-hmm. NFL did. Oklahoma did the throwbacks. Um, you know, even played a game, I think it was against uh, North Texas, where they had, you know, white helmets with the red stripe down it, you know. Uh, right. And, you know, I kind of like if they would do a version of a throwback, you know, would be kind of cool, you know, maybe an updated version. Of well, see, and I kind of was talking about them doing a throwback of the original 1960s when we first went to the interlock interview. Right. I, I thought that would be pretty cool because it look because the O kind of looks like a wagon wheel and then the U is shaped like a horseshoe. I, I think that would be just just sick, honestly. Yeah, yeah. and I, I would never admit to that. <laughs> so you'd be all for like a, a drastic change, maybe once or twice a year. Yeah, I mean nothing, nothing. You know, like I said, just one, you know, one or two games a year, and then that that then call it good. But you know, but, I, and, I, but like you said though, I would like it if it was a throwback. You know, a modern version of right. a throwback. You know what I mean? It, you know, mm-hmm. for God, you know, I'm a Steelers fan. For God's sakes, don't bring on a Bumblebee jersey. God, those drive me crazy. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, but you know, a throwback. <laughs> you know, a throwback to honor the tradition. You know. Um, it, I, that would be cool. A, a modern version of a throwback would be cool. You know, like you said, the wagon wheel, right. like the horseshoe. Uh, you know, um, you know, I I'd even like to see you know them <laughs> come out with a you know an eighties throwback where you know the teens you know they wore the half shirts. There weren't no tucking in shirts. I don't know if you can do that anymore. <laughs> but you know, like you see Bosworth. You know, all those guys had the waistline shirt. You know, that hung. You know, that's the kind where I had mm-hmm. in, in high school. I'd even like to see a throwback of something like that. You know, but. Um, you know, you know, just going to the, the, I don't ever want to look at Oklahoma's helmet and it be like mirrored or, you know, the, the schooner on it. I just don't, I, I just don't want to see, I don't, I don't want to see that. I mean, I don't think, mm-hmm. I don't think it would look good. Don't be a sissy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind seeing a chrome helmet with a chrome red OU on it. That would look all right. Yeah, I don't know. I just, it, it's just. I mean, if, if it was dark, like a really dark crimson, then I mean, I'd be okay with it. But like, you know, something that, that's really reflective and then be like, eh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, hey, let's get to um, this week's uh, Caleb's question of the week, um, brought to you by probably whatever alcohol he drank Saturday night. Um, but he, like I said, he comes up, Caleb is a thinker sometimes, and he comes up with some pretty good ones. So we're going to uh, ask our podcast fans and guests this one for this week. Um, and I'm going to kind, I'm going to go a little bit further into it because we got to give props where props is due. But um, Oklahoma this year has three top 10 picks in three sports. Um, Baker Mayfield, obviously the number one pick Kyler Murray, the number nine pick and Trey young is going to be a top 10 pick. Um, out of those three, who's going to have the better pro career. Now, before you answer, think about it. I'm going to throw this in because we actually had seven, (laughs) <laughs> top 10 picks and because we can't leave out the ladies of the softball squad because Paige mm-hmm. Lowry was Lowry was the number one pick Paige Parker was and Parker was like seven seven six or seven right yeah and Nicole Finley was Penley Penley yeah yeah so, Wait, uh, Parker might have been fifth and Penley was seventh I, I don't I yeah but I mean you know it's the I, 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 no way I can say you know I was fixing to say it's it's the you know softball professional league hey it's it's a big deal i mean well let's just go with the guys for now yeah but you know we want to give props to them but obviously the three big sports at the school are those sports um you know kyler murray in baseball baker mayfield in football and then of course trey young who's who's gonna well let's put it in a little bit more perspective okay who's gonna have the most immediate impact Mm. on on their squad i would um, I would probably say Baker Mayfield just because of all the free agency signings that um, all the free agency signings that Cleveland has done. I mean, they've, I mean, hiring that, I can't remember the dude's name to save my life, but, you know, them hiring, because he was at the Chiefs, he was at the Patriots, and, I mean, the guy knows how to build football teams, and, I mean, I thought Cleveland drafted very well. They they picked up, uh, um, oh, dad gum, I'm off the top of my head, gone. Um, they picked up, um, that Miami wide receiver, uh, Landry, um, they picked up a uh, tight end. Um, yeah. yeah, of course, if 
you hadn't asked me this, I probably could have told you every one of their names. <laughs> I, couldn't tell you, I couldn't tell you because I hate the Browns. So, <laughs> right. But, you know, they, uh, they, but, you know, looking at their free agency, looking at the draft, I mean, you know, if Baker takes over the season, I mean, Baker's got the tools, uh, the weapons to, to do something. Um, you know, and then you got Nick Chubb back there, who was number, it was second round pick for the Browns. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, they got some offensive firepower. I mean, I wouldn't be sleeping on Cleveland. I mean, I, you know, I, I, even though I feel like that if they win six games, it's going to be like a drastic, miraculous thing, you know, in year one, but after Mayfield, but, you know, just the fact that they made these moves is just incredible. Yeah. So, well, the one but, thing, the one prediction I have made this year is if Baker Mayfield starts. The first game of the season, he starts with a loss because <laughs> they play the Steelers. And, well, I mean, it's, and it, like I said, it's the Browns. But, and I've got, I got faith in our boy Baker. No. So. so he'll have the most impact. Okay, the, the earliest impact. Who Who's going to have the better pro career, Trey Young, Baker, or Kyler? Oh, gosh. Um, you know, as much as I, um, you know, I really don't know a whole lot about baseball. I mean, I'm probably – Golly. Um, depending on where Trey goes, I mean, if I, no, gosh, that's a hard one. Um, I'm probably going to go with uh, a slight edge for Trey Young, just because of his shooting ability. Um, you know, being in pro baseball, I mean, there's so many levels, and you know, it's it's not an easy sport to play in the pros. I mean, NBA isn't either. I mean, I guess it's kind of the same thing. But you know, given Trey's shooting ability and and depending on what team he goes to, I mean, if he's got shooters around him and people that can help him, um, you know, Trey, Trey probably would have the slight edge on that, be my guess. Rob, what do you think? Um, I think it's Baker across the board. Really? I think he's going to start. It's because of his Sports Illustrated cover, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't hang it up on the wall or anything, but um, I just think that uh, he's, he's such a competitor. I, think, I actually think Trey Young is going to struggle. I mean, when you get um, a six foot KD on him, can he still shoot that shot? And I, I'm not I'm not in the kid's ability. He's he's obviously talented, <clears throat> but uh, well, Steph Kyler, Curry can just about that. Steph Curry, yeah, yeah, Steph Curry can do it. Uh, I'm not ready to compare the two, but but you know if he turns right. into a Steph Curry, then by all means, uh, I just don't think he will. Uh, Kyler, albeit I think he's uh, an extremely gifted baseball player. Um, not sure he's going to come in and have the kind of impact that I think Baker Mayfield is going to. I think Baker, I think he's just going to come in and take over. And and honestly, I think he's going to do well. So um, I'm going to go with Baker, but uh, uh, I'm going to stick with with Baker on the immediate impact. I think he's going to make and with what they've done around him, they're going to make him. Uh, he's going to have the most immediate impact. I mean, for crying out loud, when you when all you got to do is win a game to be better than you were <laughs> last year, you know. And, and honestly, I, when I was at the draft, that's how Browns fans are. They're like, hey, you know, all he's got to do, and I talked to a bunch of them, and that's their mentality. All he's got to do is win a game. If he wins a game this year, he's done better than what we did last year. Obviously, in the year two, they mm-hmm. want to win more games. Year three, they want to year – but they're patient. I can give them that. Um but I think well, yeah, he, it have to be yeah. <laughs> 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 to, to <laughs> live there. <laughs> yeah, but um, you know, basketball, Trey Young. Um, you know, I, honestly, I think who's going to end up having the better pro career? I think is going to be Kyler in baseball, um, because uh, uh, you know, basketball. I think players like uh, Trey, who are you know hot commodities coming out of high school and coming out of you know. Uh, you know he's he's not he's not a KD he doesn't you know a Durant he's not I, I think he should have stayed another year or two to to build the skills that being said you know I just I think he's going to kind of get uh I'm trying to I'm stumbling around here because I'm trying to think of the last basketball player that we had what was his name the one that said that went uh was just here two years ago the the kid from the Caribbean yeah, Buddy Healed. Yeah, Buddy Healed. Where's Buddy Healed at? Everybody was, you know, touting him, and he's is he still with the Pelicans yeah. or? Yeah, he's still pretty good. I no, think he's with the Kings. He's he was traded yeah. for Demarcus Cousins. Oh yeah, that's right, right. Yeah, but I think Kyler is going to be number one. 
uh, I think he's going to be a you know a better career because first off, you got to give him and his agent props to be able to sign a four point eight million or five million dollar deal and an, an approval to play one year of college football is beyond amazing. Mm-hmm. I cannot believe the A has agreed to that. Um, and two, I think his skill set that when he went from uh, last year's baseball to this year's, and he just continued to get better. Um, you know, Rob, you brought it up that you know they're thinking about. Uh, or was it uh, was it Ricky Henderson? Yeah, you know, Ricky Henderson. He's got that type of speed. Yeah, I mean, yeah. um, that's where I think he's going to have the impact. They are going what in their system paying that much money for the number nine pick. They they see something that you know us you know, layman baseball and football fans don't see. And they are going to fast track him into he's going to be in the majors before very long. And maybe. I, and I think that's where you're going to see him make the impact. Well he hit under three hundred here at here at OU. And he's you know, he's not even scratching the surface of the pitching that he's going to get when he gets to the bigs. Right. So they're going to have to really bring his bat up to speed because I mean you got to be on base before you can steal a right. base. So right. But you know um you know Moneyball guy you know, they, they did the movie about him. You never saw Moneyball, have yeah, you? I've seen yeah, yeah. Where, you know, this guy, the A's, they pick people who can get on base. If they didn't think he could get on base, because that's the only way you can score. You're right. You know, whether, and I don't think they care whether they can get on base with a walk or a hit. They want him on base. But I'm telling you, we watched a couple of games this year, and me and Rob just went to a Dodgers game here in Oklahoma City the other night, and everything that got hit, we compared – to Kyler running the bases. It was like (laughs) this one guy, I mean, he stripped one right down the first baseline all the way into the corner. And it was a triple for this kid from, from Oklahoma city with the Dodgers. And me and Rob just looked at it. It was like, if he got a triple out of that, Kyler would have been home. There is no, and that kid was scooting. Yeah. There was no doubt that if he puts one in a corner and of course, Oklahoma city's field is odd. It's got a deep right corner, but so do a lot of fields. That's where Kyler, I think, is going. To, his longevity is going to be in the outfield. He's got an arm. Um, he's got speed. You know, bring his bat up to speed. Well, there are you know there are obviously um, some super pros that that played with that kind of speed that didn't didn't hit. You know, Otis Nixon. He never. I don't think he ever hit three hundred. But his OBP was pretty good. Right. You know, and that's. You know, I, I just think you, you know in. You, Obviously, Baker's always going to be talked about in Oklahoma because he won the Heisman, sure. and rightfully so. But I think when we sit back in 10 years, you're going to still, you know, Baker may be thinking about stepping down because I don't care who you are. If he plays five years, four years for the Browns, he's going to get thumped a couple of times. He's going to get beat up. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, he's he doesn't have the size of a um, Roethlisberger and, oh, boy, from New England uh, – Brady, Brady, you know, even Brady, he's not going to be, he's not built to take that type of punishment for three or four years. And he's quite a bit more elusive than those guys. Are, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that, you know, it really, it really pissed me off. You know, I'm as, I'm, I'm not even going to say I'm close to, but I'm almost as big a fan of the Steelers as I am the Sooners. And that damn video, the Madden video that came out that shows him, getting out of a tackle from what <laughs> there not a snowball chance in hell that's come happening on, come on. <laughs> right. so, but uh all right guys well i'm gonna have to cut it short and get off here to get the uh, kiddos to bed so hey. i appreciate y'all having me on and everything so well, a lot of fun hope to do it again soon yeah we will and when the season gets started we'll we'll get back in touch with you and we'll be doing some stuff during the season but we appreciate you coming on we, we thank you, Chris. All right, Rob, Terry, appreciate you having me on. Thank you, sir. All right. Y'all have a good one. All right, All right Boomer, Chris. Bye-bye. Sooner. Thanks for listening to the Sooner Football Fans Podcast. If you want to be on the podcast and talk Sooner Football with us, go to www.soonerfootballfans.com. Click on the How to Be on the Podcast tab, fill out the form, and we'll get you on. Boomer. Boomer.